That was stupid. I know it was stupid. Really stupid. Hey, I just said it was stupid. Today's Daily Dose of Stupid, and boy, this one is a doozy. This one goes to the CNN psychologist, or psychiatrist, yeah, psychiatrist. So CNN, which has been the source of many Daily Doses of Stupid, uh, had this guy on, he's a psychiatrist, he's a CNN contributor, and they had him on to help explain whether or not it would be, I guess, viable to expect Donald Trump to be impeached based on the questionable mental stability of the president. And this was the response that he gave. I think that medicalizing politics has three very dire consequences. Hmm. The, the first is that it stigmatizes the mentally ill. I've known thousands of patients, almost all of them, have been well-behaved, well-mannered, good people. Trump is none of these. Lumping the mentally ill with Trump is a terrible insult to the mentally ill, and they have enough problems and stigma as it is. The second issue is that calling Trump crazy hides the fact that we're crazy for having elected him, and even crazier for allowing his crazy policies to persist. Trump is as destructive a person in this century as Hitler, Stalin, and Mao were in the last century. He may be responsible for many more million deaths than they were. He needs to be contained, but he needs to be contained by attacking his policies, not his person. It's crazy for us to be destroying the climate our children will live in. It's crazy to be giving tax cuts to the rich that will add trillions of dollars to the debt our children will have to pay. It's crazy to be destroying our democracy by claiming that the press and the courts are the enemy of the people. We have to face these policies, not Trump's person. Now, it's absolutely impossible. You can bet the House that the Congress, that Pence, that the Cabinet will never, ever remove Trump on grounds of mental unfitness. That will never happen. Discussing the issue in psychological name-calling terms distracts us from getting out the vote. All right, so a couple big takeaways from that. First of all, I do want you to notice that one of the absolute, I think only Jim Acosta would be worse at CNN than Brian Stelter. Brian Stelter, who is an absolute loon and constantly tries to mask his attacks as some form of <laughs> objective journalism. When you spend 10 seconds watching the guy, you can tell he has a vitriol for Donald Trump specifically, but the right in general. Uh, Brian Stelter, who doesn't say anything about that, doesn't try to correct him, doesn't jump in at any point and say, well, now, hold on, that may be overstating it a little bit. I'm not even saying you have to say, no, no, that's um, that's completely wrong. I disagree with you on every level. Just step in and say, yeah, the math doesn't back you up on that. Or just say, well, now, l let's not try to overstate it. Uh, this nut, uh, what's his name? Francis, Dr. Francis, uh, <laughs> goes on there and suggest that Trump is worth the, worse than Hitler, Stalin, and Mao combined, that he is going to be responsible for more deaths in this century than the three of them were combined in the last century. Look, is Trump a dope? Yeah, sometimes he is. Not all the time. Sometimes he does some really weird, dopey things. Does he have a temper that is not beneficial? Yeah, I'd say that that is a, an absolutely fair criticism. Are there times where he's not real knowledgeable about the issues, that he sort of tries to get a general direction, but if you ask him the details, he's not exactly a policy wonk? Yeah, that too, a fair comparison, a, a fair criticism of the president. Saying that he's going to be responsible for more deaths than Hitler, Stalin, and Mao, that's so far outside the ballpark you're not even in the same country as the ballpark anymore. That's way out there. And to prove this point, uh, let's look at the body count. Adolf Hitler killed at least 11 million people in concentration camps, sentencing them to death. And that's just directly attributed to his actions. Six million of them, of course, being Jews. And... You could say, even though we're not going to count this in the body count, indirectly because it was the Third Reich that started this whole World War II thing, 
that you could include all of them and say 70 to 80 million people were killed by Adolf Hitler. But even if you're not counting the war, even if you're just counting the policies within his own country and the countries that he had expanded Germany's territory to, it comes to 11 million people in the span of about five or six years, if you're looking at the, the whole of his reign in Germany. All right, Joseph Stalin, they don't really know, to be honest. The records have been so messed up and, and weren't kept properly because of the way that Stalin ran things. We'll never know exactly what Joseph Stalin's body count was, but we're thinking most experts agree probably 20 million-ish. Could be more, but if you lowball the the expected or the, the guessed at figure, it's probably about 20 million for Joseph Stalin. Three million of that 20 were in the span of about a year in the Holodomor in Ukraine. So you have to take that into account, too. People always say, well, yeah, Stalin killed all those people, but he had a lot longer than Hitler, which is not unfair to say. But let's remember that Stalin also killed a very large group of people in a even shorter amount of time than Hitler did. So uh, Stalin's body count is roughly 20 million. Chairman Mao Zedong, his is by far the worst more so than the other two combined, probably, because they put his body count at roughly 45 million, a lot of those in the Great Leap Forward, directly attributed to policies that he implemented during his reign, and basically after they told him how many people had died from starvation after implementing his policies, he just kind of wrote it off as like, yeah, maybe not my best idea. I mean, these guys were inhuman monsters, and you bring that body count all together, that's at least 76 million people. Trump is a lot of things. There are a lot of things that you can be critical of the president on, and I think that they're fair criticisms. I've been pretty critical of him the past couple of weeks because of how he's handled the whole tariffs thing, how he's sort of made a mess of, of how to handle the anti-Semitism coming from the other side. There's a lot of legitimate criticisms for the president. Saying that he's killed more than these three, or will kill more than these three people, when their body count currently stands at 76 million. I'm sorry, you're so far beyond the pale, I can't take you seriously at that point. If you want to say that there are some similarities in their styles, I think even that would be quite a stretch. I'd be willing to hear you out, but I don't think you're going to be able to prove that. But to say that he's going to be responsible for the same amount of deaths as those three dictators together, no thinking rational person should take you seriously after that. And to be honest, the way that Brian Stelter reacted to it, no logical rational person should take him seriously either after that. But here's the great irony in all of this, because this nutcase actually does believe that Donald Trump is going to be responsible for this much, uh, how th th this many deaths, if allowed to stay in office. That's what he's saying here. You know what the great irony in all of that is, though? Those three people that he mentioned, Hitler, Stalin, Mao, what did all three oppose? What did all three have in common? Because they had differences, for sure. I mean, Stalin and Hitler were actually at war with each other. Russia betrayed Hitler and, you know, sided with us for the latter part of World War II. So they certainly had differences, but you know what all three of those people had in common? They opposed capitalism, free markets, all of that. They opposed religion. They were all three devoted secularists, and they drew their inspiration from the writings of Karl Marx. They all embraced socialism, hated capitalism, wanted to do everything to control the economy from central planning and dictate out to the people what they were and were not going to do. And that's what they spent their careers, that is their legacy, to destroy capitalism and to destroy religion. And what is the left doing right now? What are they advocating for? On a day-to-day -day basis, they're not openly opposing religion yet, but actually neither did 
uh, at the very least, Stalin and Hitler to begin with. They certainly did later when it came to religion. But right now, just about everybody of relevance on the left is saying capitalism is wrong, capitalism is broken, we have to get away from that system and move to something else. Now, that varies a little bit based on which Democrat you're asking. But what I find so ironic about this is for all of Donald Trump's shortcomings, and there are many, this guy is saying he's exactly like Stalin, Hitler, and Mao all rolled into one, and it's going to be even worse. Yet, do you know why their body count was that way? Do you know why they were able to rack up that many kills? Because they believed in centralized planning, opposed capitalism, and wanted religion out. And that's exactly what the Democrats are advocating for right now. If anybody is looking through history and seeing their ideology of Hitler and Mao and, and Stalin, yeah, there are differences. Hitler's a national socialist. Um, Stalin is a global socialist. Mao kind of mixed both of those camps to a degree. He wanted global socialism. He just wanted China to be in charge of it. But the point is, all three of those guys, that's the consistency that binds them together. They had no scruples about killing those people because they didn't believe in religion or accountability to a god. And the way that they were able to do it is to destroy capitalism and to destroy free markets and the ability of people to make their own choices. Which is exactly what the left is advocating for now. So if you're scared of one side or the other, becoming like Mao or Hitler or Stalin, you got to be a lot more worried about the left than the right, at least based on what they're saying right now. And this crackpot that gets on and, and goes after Trump this in this ridiculous way, he even admits at the end, this is just a political game to him. The only reason that I'm bringing this up, the only reason that I'm saying these things is to rally votes. He's saying, all that we're doing here is, is we're distracting from getting out the vote. So he's essentially admitting he's throwing all professionalism out the window, all objectivity out the window, because the only thing that's important is we get out the votes. This is only done as political gamesmanship on his side, and he's admitting to that on the air. However, there is one thing that he is right about. Ultimately, our elected officials are a reflection of the American people. Whether we want to admit it or not, as much as we complain about them, and Lord knows that I do. Ultimately, if we have a problem with our elected officials, we have to look in the mirror. They are a reflection on where America is collectively and the things that we believe. The reason that you have an AOC is because there's an awful lot of people in her district that think like she does. The reason that you have a Trump is because there are a lot of people in the country that think like he does. Love him or hate him, no matter what side you're on, ultimately your representatives do reflect who you are. And that should terrify us. That point he's right on. But the reason that this is allowed to go on, the reason that Brian Stelter and CNN don't immediately try to backtrack and say, well, now, hold on, we may not like Trump very much, but he's not Stalin, Mao, or Hitler, is because to them, First of all, truth doesn't matter. CNN can try to say facts first and, and an apple is an apple and all that stuff, but it's crap like this that shows that they don't mean it. But secondly, the reason that this is allowed to persist is that it doesn't matter how ridiculous, how insane, how divisive, how absurd your point or your argument is, as long as it is directed as an attack against Trump, it's acceptable. Anything that can be used to bring down Trump, we're okay with that. In other words, the end justifies the means. And who's the guy that's famous for advocating for the ends justifies the means? Oh yeah, Adolf Hitler, the first guy that you brought up with that 11 million person body count. Once again, CNN proving itself to be completely ignorant of history if you have to look at one and decide which one sounds a lot more like Hitler, I'm not saying that CNN is Hitler, 
But I'm saying if you had to make a comparison and say which one is closer, you'd have to go with CNN and the left. Normally, this is the part of the video where you would expect me to ask you to like the video and subscribe to the channel. But the truth is, I don't really care whether you do or not. In fact, you know what? Don't subscribe. It's not like there's a lot of really important stuff going on in the world in the state of Alabama that you should probably be aware of. So, yeah, go ahead and subscribe. Or don't. I don't really care. Reverse psychology. Boom.